Yeah, and worth almost $50 billion. And I think this is indicative of just how hot that IP mar uh, IPO market is. In fact, exchanges have raised like $140 billion this year in IPOs, and that's the record. And the last time we saw numbers like this were back in 1999-2000, when the record before that was $107 billion. And remember, that was the top of the uh, dot-com bubble bursting. So there's a lot of symbolism there. And I also think if you look at it, realistically, these are probably very overvalued companies. And if you look at IPOs in general, they typically underperform the first five years versus the overall market. So I think you're definitely starting to see some, what we like to call irrational exuberance there, Akiko. Yeah, Ryan, I mean, you mentioned a $50 billion valuation there. It's going to be more than double that, depending on where this opening trade comes here. So it does kind of signal that that exuberance here. And I would be cautious, as you're kind of stressing there, for retail investors to maybe dip a toe here. We saw the move today from DoorDash after their IPO yesterday, those shares uh, under pressure. We saw the same thing back when Lyft went out. You know, it, it hadn't reclaimed that opening trade level here. So maybe uh, talk to me about you know, how that's one thing for retail investors to maybe keep in mind here, but also just looking at the overall market, they're kind of two different areas right now of thought. It doesn't seem that a lot of that exuberance is necessarily spilling over into equities across the board. No, you're exactly right, Zach. And I think that's the best you know, opportunity right now is the fact that if you look at valuations overall, you look at the broad market, they're very reasonable, right? If you look at international stocks right now, they trade around 15, 16 times forward earnings, which historically is very good. So once you get out of IPOs and you get out of that megatech, megatech growth trade, right? Buying the S&P 500 now, you're basically buying five, six stocks, especially when you add Tesla in there, you really do have some great opportunities. And value stocks as well are trading somewhere around 14, 15 times forward earnings. And I keep looking at it from the perspective of, look, the economy is going to reopen, right? We know we're going to have a vaccine. And if you look at it optimistically, next summer, we could have a real normalization of the economy. And there's a lot of stocks that are going to benefit from that. And they're old school stocks, not new school stocks. So I think when you're building your portfolio right now, what we're doing for our clients is, you know, we're making sure that we have the old school in there, not just the new school. And today's a perfect example of that. Energy prices are up to $47 a barrel. Um, and energy stocks have had a magnificent move since November. So that's where a lot of the good long-term upside potential is, not in a lot of these hot IPOs that are just like priced to the moon right now. Ryan, let's talk about the data that we got out this morning. Initial jobless claims jumping 137,000 week on week. Uh, this is the first time we saw the number tick above 800,000 in seven weeks. I know we don't want to make too much of just one week, but but the the trajectory over the last several weeks uh, doesn't seem to point to a, a good sign in terms of the labor market recovery. How do you look at the numbers we got today in the broader scope of the recovery? Yeah, I think two things, Akiko. Number one, one sunny day doesn't make a summer, right? It's not going to be linear seeing that drop in unemployment. Um, unemployment now is under 7%. Now, I think to put this in perspective, remember, the strategists and economists months ago were predicting we we're going to be at 11% unemployment right now. So we don't have a vaccine yet. We're not using a vaccine yet. And we're already under 7%. And I think it's reasonable that you're going to see some slowing because we've seen so many jobs basically created over the course of the last couple of months that probably can't keep up until we have the vaccine. The other thing to think about is, remember those jobless claims, they're backwards looking, right? It's already happened. And the reality of it is, uh, you know, if you look at unemployment, jobs get, they're going to be last. You're going to get the growth first, and then you're going to get the hiring. Like Amazon's going to hire another 100,000 people over the next couple months. And as that economy renormalizes and we start going on trips again, hotels open again, restaurants open again, that's going to add a lot of jobs back into the economy as well. But I would argue the fact that we have no vaccine yet that's been widely distributed. Um, really, the fact that we have a housing boom going on has been one of the saviors here and the fact that we've seen unemployment come down so much so far. So I think you have to look at the glass half full here, not half empty. How risky are you looking into kind of some of these rebounds? If you look at cruise stocks, airlines, there are still some concerns about debt being a pretty large overhang there. So how do you factor that into waiting for getting back to normal? No, it's a good point. I think we have to remember is, you know, corporate CEOs, they're smart, right? As soon as the pandemic started, they started managing their balance sheets way more effective than Wall Street thought, because let's, let's face it, Wall Street's been dead wrong here on how fast this recovery is. Although our conversations, you know, I was very bullish back in March, for the record, Zach. Um, you know, I did anticipate that you're going to see a quick recovery. 
But you have to remember, too, I mean, talking about cruise cruise lines, looking at airlines, they do have a lot of liquidity. They've had access to a lot of liquidity. In fact, if you look at the S&P 500, they have records amount of cash on hands right now when you look at S&P 500 companies to the tune of somewhere around over $3 trillion. So, you know, liquidity has not been an issue, and it's been that bridge that companies need. And I suspect they're going to be able to continue to maintain their balance sheets until the economy reopens which also makes me very, very bullish again on that reopening trade, even though it's had a big move up and maybe we'll go sideways for a while here, but the long-term potential there, that's where you have the longest runway and that's where you definitely wanna make sure that you have money in your portfolio being allocated to. And again, not just that growth trade, which has been played out to some extent.